He said, light be. I believe sometimes over these years, in all of our lives, and I know we've been in different places, experienced many things, but there's, sometimes it seems like, um, I think it really, really is just darkness. It's not just uh, an appearance of darkness. I believe it's an outflow of the influence of our responses because God has spoken to us as new creations in Christ Jesus. In spite of the, the activity of the earth, you and I have been singled out, mankind, men and women, have been singled out to experience a recreation. Amen. We go to places, some of you have gone all over the world and stood in places that have been there for eons, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we go, we've moved through this country and stood in places that, and on mountains and in deserts and watching uh, geysers and all that sort of thing fly out, <laughs> you know, looked over things that were commonplace, but they had to be repopulated with buffalo ra ro roaming the range, all those kinds of things. But God didn't speak to any of those things to recreate them. He spoke to us. There will come a day, the book of Revelation says, that God will change heaven and earth, put it in different positions and activities. But you and I, we have to be. We can't be frustrated with things that go on in our lives, things that go on in the world. We have to hear from God. See, in order to respond to God, we have to hear Him. And He's made us able to hear Him and that He made us light. And light, the darkness never overpowers the light. We have the choice to stay, walk in the light, receive from the light, come out of the things of darkness, be healed from the effects of darkness and sin. To even come out of the mind of the flesh and the mind of the principalities and powers of darkness and be changed. Not just recreated in our spirits, but our spirits can, can grow, can be filled with what we, uh, we sang and, and cried out to God about. We sang the song that Deverly wrote years ago, I Will Stand. We step, and we can still sing that today, but I believe today it has to come from a, a different place. It's not a description of something that's going to come. It's a testimony now. that we have, yeah, yes. something has taken place, and now is a time where we need to move. Yes. <laughs> we need to move. I'm not necessarily talking about the physical layout of things at this point. We have to begin to move. Amen. We're either that people or we're not. Shine. Holy right. He didn't give you words of something. He gave you words that were eternal words. Yes. They line up with what he says. Holy. That's right. yes, Amen. So regardless of... of all the other kind of things that we could, we could go to. Uh, and I'm not sure actually where we're going today, but I, I, I promised God that I'd follow. I was a little bit shaky. But when God speaks another word, you go with what God's speaking. You don't say, well, well let me deliver this one first. I'll work on this next week, and then I can <laughs> I'll be more confident. No, we walk in the confidence of his commands and who he knows us to be. Sometimes we have to step out, may have all kinds of reactions from other people or opinions or whatever. God doesn't, mind, doesn't care. We're not only meant to step out, but you're meant to have ears to hear him. Because he'll speak beyond your prejudices about people. I don't mean that in race. We're prejudiced against somebody's got more hair than I've got. 
I'm, I'm, Frank is not one of them. <laughs> but praise God. I'm reminded that God said recently, I really think I heard it from someone, but I don't know who to give credit to, but I know it came from the Bible anyway. It was taken from a scripture. That if, you don't, if there are no roots, if there is not any good root, you'll never have good fruit. And when a root loses its capability to produce fruit in the manner in which it was made, then it, 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 is, it will eventually, those roots will dry out and they have to be plucked up. Hallelujah. Um, it's going to sound like a, that doesn't matter. Shut up, Sharon. Matthew chapter 11. I'm going to be all over the place for a little while and then we'll, I believe God will settle this down. I'm going to say these words, and I, I, I'm always subject to the Holy Spirit direction and correction, but I believe that, I still believe with all of my heart, without a foundation in this Word of God, not just a book that you read, or things that you've brought out to do, or command God, or to, to add to your voice to what God has said, but I believe that this book is a relationship with God. That's why the Holy Spirit um, hovers not just over us, but in us. He's in us. Because Jesus said, I'm saying all these things, but you can't understand them. And, and when he was talking to them in John, the last uh, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17 of the Gospel of John, he kept saying the Holy Spirit, he's giving facts, but he says that you're, something's going to take place. And so they were prepared for that command when, when Jesus said, stay here in Jerusalem, tarry here in Jerusalem until the Holy Ghost comes. We read it like stories, but there was something that got across to them. The crucifixion planted it in them. It dug the ground so that that seed of what God's voice brings, the faith of what he creates and what he means, comes to pass. It wasn't just him seeing him raised from the dead, but he, you know, Jesus didn't stay in heaven very long. He came right back because he had to deal with those that he had been given to prepare them for what was going to come that was going to blow the whole world upside down. It says at the end, by the time the apostles had done what they were supposed to do and passed from this earth, the whole world had been turned upside down. And that we didn't even exist then as people or as a nation. But God already had plans. Don't get so earthly minded that you cannot understand that God knows exactly what he's doing. It looks confusing because we look at what's going on around us and think that's what's going on. But that's that place. You have to realize that you were created separately from this world. You were created as separate from this world. Only your body had something that was in the earth, and that's called dust. But he spoke to these things, and they came to be. But when he made man, and he made them in his image and in his likeness, and then he breathed, his breath, not into Adam's mouth, into his nostrils. A different connotation altogether. So the breath that's in us, the Holy Spirit, um, we, we think that like what happened on the day of Pentecost and even what we hold in our doctrines in speaking in tongues is, is something that comes upon you. It says the, the Spirit of God hovered over them, but they began to speak with other towns. That, that fire came to hover over the, the creation. 
that breathe the breath of God. And of course, there's not much talking you can do without breath. <laughs> so, hallelujah. Why are those things important? I'm not just totally sure, except that I believe that we have had such a conglomeration of um, activity in all of our lives over all the generations. We hold in ourselves the iniquities passed down. And God, what we're getting to today, God has he means for those things to lose their hold in us, not to make us well, not to make us famous, but so the body of Christ can, as one, begin to move in the earth. Matthew uh, chapter 11. Oh, that's the next one I have. I went to the next one already. The reason it's not in Matthew 10, 34, it's because I was meaning to go to 11. I thought, but that's good too, but I don't know where <laughs> Okay. So I've written down the wrong thing. Matthew 11, I wrote Matthew 11, 34. So help me here. Um, what I'm gonna tell you is, um, For whatever you say to this mountain, help me here. I know why this, I wrote this down, but I just mixed the that and the verse. It's Mark 11, thank you, that's it. Thank you, ma'am. And if you go back and look at, you can read this again, you'll see uh, even the thing about the, the fig tree and things of that nature. And Jesus replying said, and of course this was the re after the response of the, of the uh, apostles to the, seeing the fig tree, have faith in God constantly. Truly I tell you, whoever says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and does not doubt at all in his heart, but believes that what he says, as this is verse 23, will take place, it will be done for him. Of course, I'm reading from the Amplified. It's a little, uh, probably a little wordier, but the point I, would, the point I saw, I, the point that God said to me, was after um, talking about creation and realizing that the uniqueness of our creation is that he made us to be like him. To be able to speak to things, created things, things in the natural realm, things even to ourselves. Because we know that mountains are not just necessarily the backdrop of a, but we have, we have high places in us when you say high places, then you have to understand high places. We want to think, oh, high hopes, we're going to sing that song. No, I'm not talking about that. The devil puts up, there's a mountain that the, the enemy tries to, to cause us to come to. Why is that so? Why do I need to know this? Because we can just hear sermons and hear sermons, but if you don't hear and understand that God has worked through all these ages in the earth, and we don't value even those that have stood in places, even those that have fallen in places, if we don't see how God's saving power works, and we're just taking these things out for ourselves. And God said, I've always been this way. I've always been this way. He didn't create us to sin. But what I, 
what God was saying. If I said, he didn't say if I said to a mountain, no, he said if you would say to this mountain. And what did he say? He was talking about the faith that he had given you. First of all, I don't know yet that I know how to describe it. Sometimes when I'm at home with the Lord and in the atmosphere of certain things, I hear it more clearly. I know that, that I have connected with something other than just the words that I've been taught. But we're, when we know that God has given us the substance with which he speaks, God never says anything that he doesn't believe. He didn't say to the devil, cursed are you, you know, and I know we, I don't want to go into that, but that's, we, our minds have got this picture that's not quite accurate with the word of God or the activity that is explained through the scriptures. But we have to understand that that God believes <laughs> himself. What does the enemy want from all of us is to doubt ourselves. And he wants us to use God as the scapegoat. Something didn't happen, well God didn't. Something's not happening, God won't. See, God won't. All of that is what I said God said to me this morning, and I wrote down in big letters, war. Genesis 1-1 was creation, but by the time you get to Genesis 3, a war had begun. And we couldn't win this war. But God had already planned and purposed, and, you, and even Jesus came and won the war, and yet we're still fighting. Hallelujah. Most of us, and I'm not, a, I don't, I'm just going to say this. Most of us are mostly concerned about ourselves or the people we love. If we realized the power of God that's in us, then you and I wouldn't be caught up in all these silly controversies. We would know where we needed to stand and we needed to know what, we would know what we needed to do. And we wouldn't argue with one another wherever the people are standing. We would be believing God. What are you saying? I'm not sure. But all I heard was, my people don't know how to be a people. People have never been able to be a people except when everything seemed like it was going good. If we had the time, and I, I did it, but. What we have to understand, God speaks what he means. You and I know we don't have the power to heal ourselves. All by ourselves. Or to change someone else. <clears throat> so we can't in the flesh live that. Even in our own minds, we cannot. I think one of the big, sometimes one of the biggest tripping points have been is that because we get so much knowledge, even in the word of God, that we think that we can affect this on someone. But it's still your faith. You can speak and teach these things, but if you don't believe them, if faith is not part of your I could say of me, I won't even blame you guys. If I don't believe this, I can explain it to you, but it has no power to change you or to turn a nation or to turn a people or to turn me. And sometimes we want to be the, have the correctness of what we say, but we use it. The enemy has encapsulated it in, in our unbelief and in our fears. Even the fig tree, 
when Jesus spoke to it, it, it seemed like it happened fast, but when they left, it was looking the same. By the time they got, the disciples came back by, the fig tree had, it had withered. Because Jesus didn't just say, you're not doing a good job, fig tree. I'm not happy with you. He gave it a command. Because you have borne no fruit, your purpose hasn't come to pass. Then you can't, you can't operate out of those roots anymore. Our roots of unbelief, our roots of hatred, our worst roots of selfishness, the roots of darkness, they have to die. And Jesus will pluck them out. And we will, we will believe that instead of that, there's going to be something that will bear the thing that God meant in your life, my life. In the kingdom, primarily, always is there. I just wanted to read a, a comment from this. I, let's see. I think it was an editorial comment. Let me just see here. Okay. He was recounting a, um, uh, this is George Montgomery. Uh, writing the introduction. He was the, whatever, he was the editor, but he was also all th in charge of all the publications in 1960. <coughs> this is, uh, like I say, from, this woman had been given an opportunity to come to, did it say where she was? Oh, was, he, was, he was speaking in Tulsa, and she didn't live too far away from that. And um, so she, she did everything she could, and she went to Tulsa during this meeting. And what you see of these pictures, let me see if I can get it to you. That's exactly what it looked like. We, people were dressed nicely. You see it in the movies and stuff, but sometimes people weren't dressed nicely. We just wore what we had. Everything would have looked very cluttered and very uninviting to us today. You know, we sat on, we saw, sometimes they had straw on the ground, but underneath it was just the ground. And in Oklahoma, of course, it was red, sort of. It's really not all red earth, but there are parts that it is. And there were chairs, just like the folding chairs that we have, only they were the brown ones and they were not quite as stable as the ones that we have. And there was just a sea of them under all the tents. And of course you had tent poles and all the way they stretch and all that sort of stuff. And all kinds of captiv captivating things for children's minds to get involved with instead of listening. But <laughs> um, so she came to the meeting and someone asked her after that, um, and everybody was, was saying, oh, that she'd gone to, see or Robertson, she'd seen all these things, and, and did he look the way he looks, you know, oh, by that time there was TV, of course, does he look like he did on TV, and uh, what does he look like in person, does he look the same in a crusade as he does on television, da 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 da. And he said, when the lady finally got a word in edgewise, she said, now wait a minute, I'm going to give it to you straight. I didn't even see Oral Roberts. Didn't see Oral Roberts, they exclaimed in a chorus. Didn't you go to the crusade? Yes. I went to the crusade, and I attended every service, and I heard Brother, Brother Roberts preach. But to tell you the truth, when that man started preaching, he lifted Jesus Christ up so high that I couldn't even see the man Oral Roberts for looking at Jesus Christ. And when I read that, I thought, oh, Lord. Our hearts should have in it that kind of a thing that we want to see Jesus. And when we do that, we want others to see Jesus. I don't want them to know about all my troubles today. I don't want to know, you know, all these sort of stuff. I want to see Jesus. Amen. Truthfully, that's why we're here. That's why God created man in his image and in his likeness and gave him all the things that he did 
to be able, an intelligence in a way of dealing in this earth that the mountains would obey, that the animals would, would react to their commands and commune with them in a place. God, we have never seen what God really meant. There's no, there's no movie that can describe it because man's mind cannot comprehend what was in God's. But somewhere in our hearts, somewhere in the, the, the life, the new breath that came in the confession of Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, and the Holy Spirit stirring and firing those things up was not to burn them up. It was to consume them in the glory of God so that what we had been created for would come to pass. Hallelujah. And we think, well, I don't know from here. No, from right now. We make the decision every day where we're going to live from. Hallelujah. There's a lot of things to drag us down. There's a lot of things to confuse us. There's a lot of activities that we think we have to do or we won't be able to maintain. But here again, don't, don't blame God for your poverty and don't blame God for your, your, your richness. It doesn't belong to you. It belongs to him. It is to work a thing in you and in the earth. It is to work to the glory of God. There's something so mighty that has to change in each one of us, and I'm talking about myself, not just you, that, that we have walked away from or that God has, but I don't want to say this, not blaming anyone. I'm saying that God knows exactly where we are, how we got there, and what the problem is. But when we won't war, yes, can I tell you just a little bit of what I understand about the man and the woman in Genesis that kind of took me by surprise? Because sometimes we read the story, and I'm just like that. But there's a part of us, we don't, God doesn't start out everybody and breathe into the, your child's being when they come out of your womb. War, you're made for war. No, he doesn't do that. But we find out in the church and in our life, if we live a real life, if you have a church that teaches the truth, if you have a place that's going to tell you you're not always right, but you can be in just a second. You may not have understood this, but God isn't mad at you. He's telling you this now so you can walk away from that and walk into the light. The darkness can no longer feed you. Because <laughs> he really what the devil has done, he's tried to reverse God's prophecy and make us walk and eat from the dust of the land, eat from our own flesh. And that's how a kind of a deceiver he is. He doesn't care about you. He didn't care about God, so he's certainly not going to care about you. In fact, he hates you. And no matter what he might offer, eternity is still ahead. Let me see if I... Yeah. I was looking... I just, <laughs> here where I wa writ, wrote, here's where I writ, I writ war, <laughs> war, war begins. And because I was, I, was, I was looking at Genesis chapter 3, and there's so many things in the other things, I don't even have a clue sometimes myself. When the Holy Spirit moves, I know a whole lot more than I really do when I'm just, you know, W waking up, not, it's not true every time waking up, sometimes he's spoken to me in the night, but when he begins to talk about now the serpent, this is Genesis 3, was more subtle and crafty than any living creature of the field which the Lord had made. There's something about this, we always think of a snake, but the truth of the matter, uh, it, when you go to Isaiah, and Ezekiel, you'll find how, how Satan looked in heaven. He was most beautiful, most talented, most intelligent. He had a high place in the face of the Father. 
So when he decided to rebel and uh, hate God and love himself more, I don't know exactly how it comes. We could put it in human terms, but I don't think that's the purpose today. But, but when, when we read about Adam and Eve, the, the man and the woman, we don't always see the fullness of what went on. To, to us, it's just like a sequence of events, and that was it. And it but Adam had a lot of, of time with the father. Um, he, Adam and Eve had many times of meeting in the garden. It says it was their, their practice, their habit, that God would meet them. So they were always had access to the presence and the face of God. And although they probably never saw his face, because the father really is, is his face has not been fully revealed, except that we can see it in Jesus Christ that he is a spirit, and that those are, you know, I don't know whether there's times when you've been in the presence of God when you just thought, I don't think I can breathe. It's not because you're dying. It's because your, your, air, your, your body's not used to that kind of rarefied air, <laughs> and part of you has to relinquish any kind of fear that would be there in order for the presence of God to, to be manifested, if I can put it that way, but primarily you will hear him and it'll be so audible that it creates in you the concept, literal concept of what he's saying. The enemy tries to do this too with fear. He creates pictures of fear, creates, uh, if you do this, you're gonna lose everything. If you do this, it's not gonna work. If you, if you do this, nobody's gonna believe you. If you do this, the people that loved you are not gonna love you anymore. If you do this, you're not gonna be healed. God's just gonna leave you out here forever. And those things become like images and realities in us. So it's not like it's, it, it's unreal, it's just like we have to realize that the weapons of our, why the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty before God, for the pulling down of strongholds. Some of, you know, we are supposed to be a stronghold. Under the shadow of the Most High is a stronghold, but it's against the enemy, not against us. It's not against one another, it's a place where the presence of God in each one of us should enhance or come alongside even without knowing and provide strength and unity with the will of God in your lives. I think the best way I can just put it in is, is kind of very simple. But in Genesis 3, you see that man sinned. How did he sin? Same thing said at the beginning. God said to them, of all that you can comprehend here in this existence and in this place, you have free reign. You will rule, you'll subdue all these things. One thing you cannot do is eat the fruit of the tree of what? The knowledge of good and evil. Satan was already on the earth, but Satan had create, uh, God had created this place and there was, he couldn't, the only way he could come in is through his own deception and that was what was in him. But, and so that's what he really wants us to do. He really wants us to, to go against what God has presented himself to us in all kinds of ways to be. And I don't care how hard the pressure is. I don't care how close the person is to you. I don't care what you might think. You've got to hear from God. God's voice is as precious to you as what we would think, I just want to see him. When we want to see him, we want to see what we look at as seeing. 
but I'm going to say sometimes you won't see something, but you might be looking right at it, because, but because you're not going to receive it unless it comes in the way you want it to come, then you miss the activity of God in your life, even seeing God in one another. Even if you see one thing in someone, then that's the only thing you need to talk about. Everything else is off limits because everything else is going to turn the enemy loose, not only on them, but on you. If God has declared a thing, well, what if somebody proves something? You've still got to believe God and then know what to do. Because sometimes most of the things that we've ever dealt with is in position. That's why he lingered and didn't come right at the, to the garden at the time they were expecting. They didn't converse with each, with each other. How should we say this to God? Because one of the other one could have said, well, he already knows what we think anyway. He probably already knows what we've done. We ought to just come and say, God, I'm not sure how all this happened except that we didn't do, we disobeyed you. They never asked to be, re they had never repented. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay. Satan has no power to repent. What he has done, he has done. It goes beyond what he, anything you and I can think of. So I don't ever feel sorry for him. I'm sorry that he did that. I'm sorry for what had happened. Because his first sin was against God. It wasn't against us. He hated God. He wanted to take the place of God. He lifted himself up. He convinced other angelic beings to come with him. And then went to war with God, and he lost that war. And he was cast out of heaven. And those that chose to follow him went out, and he was cast to the earth. Okay, I don't want, I'm just trying, making sure I'm not getting too, too far afield here, except that I see that what, why do we need to know these things, Pastor Sharon? Truthfully, I don't actually know, except that God said, my people, for their lack of knowledge, their lack of understanding of me, continue to repeat when I have put them in a time of victory. The victory still has to be won. You're still going to have to fight. You're still going to have to find the way to get that, that voice and that warfare of the enemy to turn back. Everyone that's ever lived on the earth under the, under the covenants of God has had to fight. And we have a bare record so we know that you and I have also not always held up our banner very well. We also know that we have disobeyed or that we've decided that we didn't need to do that. God wouldn't care. I could get by with this. But God in Christ Jesus did something even better than what he did for Adam and Eve in the garden. He did restore them to a place, but he could not because there was no person's blood, no animal's blood, that could pay the price or win the war. It had to be God himself. So when we talk about what we're going to move, I don't know how to say it when Deverly told me these are songs she liked, and I said, yeah. You know, I love them. I would have used them years ago, but we couldn't past those, but now that we're back in this building, we can play those up here. They're not on, they're not on the tape. <laughs> so the music is, we have coverage for that, but not the videos. But when I realize that I begin to listen to them, I don't just say, oh yeah, I'll do that. No, I go back, put myself, what you're talking about, what God was moving in you about. 
because it's not just like, okay, she's going to do her part, she's going to do her part, I'm going to do my part, and you got to do God means something. And for a while, it's going to be like this, but I don't believe it's going to stay like this forever. But what we will allow God to do right now, it will bring such a presence and, and, and assurance of the power of God in us that when people walk through those doors or when we walk out in the parking lot, that people's lives are going to change. When we go into the grocery store, I'm going to know exactly who that woman is or who that man is, who that person is. And probably there's many more that might all, not always be in a grocery store. There's something that I long for in myself, and there's something that's, it's, um, I don't think it's, it's impossible. But I think it takes something more of a sold out in life to be able to stand in the midst of it. It's not that I haven't seen that in other people. I've also seen people fall. But that's not the point. God never takes away what he's given somebody. But we have to learn how to walk more accurately. And that's why one of the things is, because I'm going to turn from Genesis and go to the other place that God had me go for today. But the basis of it is all here. If we don't see the activity that when God creates something and he speaks over it, just with his mind and his presence, how how blessed have you and I been already? It's not all the, it's not even your fault or my faults. It's not just the people that left their faults or all this sort of stuff. We found, and I don't know if, if you didn't find this, then praise God for it, but I found in the midst of all these things that have taken place here, actually from, from, the, from even before we started the church, I didn't want to, to see things, I didn't want to, but I realized that, that, and I wasn't talking about anybody else here, I was talking about me. I said, God, I'm not, I don't think I'm ready for this. You can be in places and have a little bit of a reputation. I had most of mine from singing back in those days. But when God shows you that that's not even close to what he means in you or what he means for himself in a place. I'd already lived a life of, of different kinds of churches, all kinds of things going on, splits in the church, in the denomination, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. You think, well, why is that you poor mouthing? I'm not, I'm just telling you, I already walked through those and I couldn't learn anything. It's still gonna just keep happening when we don't let God change us and realize what time it is. So it's time that whatever you attitudes you have about anyone in your past, you need to bring them before God and let the blood flow in the midst of you and let the blood flow in them again. I don't know how you see things, Pastor Joan, but I see that sometimes if we don't, if we don't forgive, if we don't go on, and it's not that it puts us better, it really gives us an I guess. You think, wow, we started on a high and she's brought us low. Well, hallelujah. We got to go on. Got to go on. And it's, it's individually. It's not talking just to one person at all. And truthfully, um,
I look at the greatness of God, and if we don't understand that regardless of all these things, God's greater. We used to sing a song, I don't remember the, but it always, is, I don't know whether it's the chorus or the verse, whether it started over and over this, but it was always saying, grace, <clears throat> God is greater <clears throat> than all my sin. And as a kid, sometimes I, well, let's not go into my kidness, but. I never really think I understood what sin was. And I had to find out a lot of things that probably some people might have not have thought <laughs> were sins. But a lot of it deals, deals with whether or not we really take God seriously. And seriously is not necessarily our, our outward responses. But when things change and things turn, I would have to say that probably Adam and Eve were probably having a good time. I don't think they were bored. I don't think they were sitting around feeding each other fruit like the pictures depict. God gave them some, some real charges, some real things. He had put a, a people in the earth to know him, to know his name, to become what he had made them in his image and his likeness, to be just like him. They were to be his allies against the enemy because God knew he could never, unless Jesus came, unless his blood was spilled, this was the end of his creation. And the devil was not gonna win that war. He didn't have that power. He didn't even know what God could do. You can say it where it's funny in, in, in colloquial language if you want to, and I enjoy those kind of sermons too, but the truth is you have to know it in yourself, not just as a clip it thing. And we say, well, if Satan had ever known what he's going to, he still doesn't know. He doesn't believe anything. He only believes himself. And according to what it says in the gospel, that there'll come a time, um, and I can't remember where it is, actually. Might even be in the Old Testament. There'll come a time, <laughs> because it's written there, that you will see that you're gonna exclaim, just like the Bible says, this runt, how did this runt deceive the nations. He is not the imposing force that we think. He's a defeated foe. He's a liar from the beginning. He's always been a liar. He just lied and lied. He still lies. And he still wants to catch everybody up in the lies. And if you're the one that's lied, then see what comes out of you first is to try to make the other person the liar so you can, that's what, they did. Well, the serpent, he, <laughs> well, God understood, he understands even yet, but what I'm saying is that that God, instead of, I know, I, please don't misunderstand when I say they didn't repent, but, but they didn't. But what they, remember what, when God called to them, I said, where are you? And they answered back, we're here. And when they got in space, they said, what did they say? That serpent you gave. That's how what a deception is. The devil is, he tries to make himself like his emissary from God, he was not. And, and, and they, they, they came, they had immediately become the accuser. 
They didn't come to God and say, we're so sorry, God. We really blew it. We disobeyed you. They didn't weep. They had no sorrow. They had shame. They were ashamed. And they began to accuse. They accused Satan, yes, but they accused God. So God already had the deliverance to that, of course. And that was through. And every act that God has ever done for you and I is so holy. Every time that, that I found myself getting so angry that I y y yapped out at somebody else or whatever. And some people don't even want... <laughs> some people won't forgive you because they just... There's a pattern we follow. If somebody asks forgiveness, honor, they're asking forgiveness. Them asking me is not the most important thing. Their dealing with the Lord is the most important thing. Because you and I are not the judge. But when we ask forgiveness, make sure that our forgiveness comes from a reality of what was wrong in us against our relationship with God to have been that way and done those things. Because a lot of times we just want to cover things ourselves. We want to put on fig leaves. We need to let God cover our sins. So, going to leave that for now. And I'm just going to take up the things that God said. I'm going to ask you this though. If you have questions about these things, don't just go off and talk among yourselves. Ask me. Because if I need see I have done wrong, then I need to apologize and ask your forgiveness and let God heal both of us. When you and I speak, we need to know what we mean and what will happen as a result of what we speak. I guess what's here, just at this point, I don't know how the, the words aren't really clear in me, but what I hear is, in the scripture, I, I'm wondering why I'm not finding it, but maybe it's in my understanding right now. But. Oh, I know why. Can I just say this? When it comes down to the end, you have to understand that God gives no repentance for Satan. He gets only judgment. Adam and Eve were tempted and they yielded, but God forgave them, covered them, couldn't give the fullness of forgiveness like we have in Christ, but he made it where they, they wouldn't miss their appointments. But they had to go to their appointments compromised because the enemy was now in the world. And that's why the war began. We think, well, this isn't a war. Yes, it is. You and I are in a war today, more relevant than it's ever been before. And that's why sometimes we've heard phrases like we've got to stop playing church and all those sort of stuff. And I, and I agree, but, and I've even said it probably, 
But it's one thing to say it out there. It's another to come to God and say, God, where am I playing church? Where am I not pleasing? And where is this going to lead to if I don't turn and begin to walk the way that you mean for me to walk in communion with him? God gave them a time to repent. They did not. They hid they hid, hid themselves and their sin. They spake out about it as an accusation. And they tried to hide behind the created rather than deal properly with the creator. You and I have no, no privilege. I don't care what's happened. We don't have any excuse to blame someone else, even if they were wrong. We have to go to God. Parents with your children, children with your parents. And I think sometimes that's where the, the really the thing comes. Because if you continue that, it's going to continue in the family line. You hold in you the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will testify, I've been recreated in Christ Jesus. I am a new creature. Old things have passed away and all things have become new. Christ lives in me. I have the victory. God knew me before the foundations of the world. He planned and, and made all these things. But yet you and I, sitting where you are, me standing here, couldn't do a one of them. If we didn't have the breath of God still available. I was watching something on the, I don't know what channel it was. Or I don't know what channel it was, but I was watching a, um, a, a lot of pregnancies where something had taken place. Anyway, but what, what I was looking at is there are all kinds of things out there, but there's nothing stronger than you to breathe life over your children and your grandchildren. We have a habit, you know, my father was, was really very, um, in a way, could have been a whole lot more had he not been in Christ. Because I saw his father and I saw his brothers deal with their children. And although we had some hard, some hard blows and shoves and, and pushes, was nothing like he never raised a razor strap to us and cut our flesh. He wounded our soul, our spirit. He wounded our souls. Caused us to not see things properly for many years. Probably more so for my sister than myself or my brother. But what, I, what I'm just saying is, you have the life of God in you. I don't care. Just even all things out. You have the life of God in you. You can speak life or you can speak death. You can go back and tell them about what all the, the children did before and they're just like them. Don't you do that. You're speaking, you're speaking devil language into the lives of those children, if I can just put it that way. You're breathing death. You're in agreement with whatever has been passed down or whatever thing has hurt them. And your, our job as God's children is not to rehearse people's pasts, but to find a place before God all by ourselves to pray, not just pray so God you do this thing, but get in there and find the place where you and I need to still repent about something that is is more than, you know, I used to say the burr in my saddle, but you know, more than the thing that just irritates you, it really drives your direction and your responses. So we've got to move. We've got to move out of all those places. We've got to realize where we are. We're not in the Garden of Eden, but you're at the throne. Don't use that just so when your prayers will be heard. 
Because you find out when we compromise these things, it really rubs, it doesn't work in the same fluid flow. Because it says that we are seated at the right hand of the Father in heavenly places. That's where we are. I remember standing here not too many years ago saying some things. And as I was saying them, God said, I will hold you accountable for these things, not because I hate you, but because I love you and because I mean this thing for all of my people. We are citizens of heaven. There's nothing in this earth that should shape or form our minds to conform to something that is against God. There is no way that we can't believe that God doesn't love everyone. Hallelujah. And that what, who God is is more powerful than any kind of activity in this earth or in other people. How do we do this? The enemy has made us look like we're powerless and yet we're not. Let your heart speak and it, it's, it's powerful. Let your heart speak and get rid of all those other things that go and, and, and that's what will bless people. But I'm not looking for people to bless, just bless people. We, we want God to win. We want this war. We may, every one of us still may leave this earth with that war still going on. But hallelujah. It's one. I may not understand how to do it every day, but every day I'm not just going to repeat something. I've been having to work in the yard a little bit this past week. It's not as easy as it's been years past. And you learn to realize that, Lord, thank you. I never said thank you for all the strength I've had. I always just thought, well, this, I have this strength. Well, I do have it. But I didn't, because <laughs> I couldn't get the timers worked, I had to water the, the flowers with my tears. <laughs> so to speak, because my face was to the ground, face to the ground, over many issues. Well, I like it when it's joyful. Hey, there's no greater joy than when you're weeping. God turns into joy. When God takes something and he said, now I can breathe. Now I can change that thing. Mm -hmm. Don't let people keep goading you into anger. Don't let people keep getting you in twisted into arguments. Well, it's just the way they are. Their way just bothers me. Well, give their way to God. And let him show you why your way bothers him. <laughs> He'll do it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. I know, well, I refuse to do that. Yes, Lord, I won't. The truth of the matter is, is I, th I think, don't think this is original to me, but I've, I have remembered it for a while, that truthfully, we lost in the Garden of Eden. But God, Jesus did not lose in the Garden of Gethsemane. Right. When he was made sin, to bear our sin, he won the victory. So don't look at even the places that seem hard, or I don't know if I can handle this. Let God show you how to win the war over these things. And then, you'll know you have a victory. The one thing if we look back, um, we can't look all that way back because there's all kinds of different wars. They all have different faces and different reasons and all that sort of stuff. But 
sometimes that we look at the things that the United States has been involved in over the years, but if you realize that there was something, something in the heart of the soldiers and something in the heart of the people that believed that what they were fighting against was evil. And I know there have been a lot of things going on. It's, it's just the rhetoric is just overwhelming today. But God keeps saying, it, you still have to do things by your life in me. I can't go back to history and try to do this or prove that. That's, you know. But you're not going to erase this book. You're not going to cancel this book. There's not going to be any movement that says that God does not exist and remain. And I don't want anything in my life to present itself that I didn't believe there was God. And there's sometimes I can't just keep up banter with some just someone because what we're talking about is against God. I'll be kind. I'll try to be wise in the spirit of God. But there's some things that if you look at all the things that you have available of, you can find reasons why things will fail. But I can find reasons why God will prevail. And that's where we are. We're either alive in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and we have good news, or else we're going to try to take this and put all the news in here and try to know God was still God. Didn't matter what the serpent came to do or what his thing was. God had already determined because the lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. God didn't create something that he was going to lose. He created something that was going to be forever. Amen. And he knows how. Oh, how did we get stuck in the middle of the world? Would, you know, the truth of the matter is that's just, that's just the soul and it's just the hatefulness of the devil. Because even the devil doesn't believe all that stuff. You're going to have to know God is God. And it doesn't matter what your, what your children have done or, or anything else. You still hold, God still holds not just an answer. He holds deliverance. And sometimes that deliverance is going to cost you something. Hallelujah. My mom was, um, she, was she, she disciplined us. But she disciplined us not only with a switch, <laughs> But she dis disciplined us with um, her words. I believe the scripture I, was, I went to first was the scripture that out of the abundance of your heart, the mouth will speak. I believe that's Matthew 12, 34. What did, what did Jesus come to do in 1 John? I don't remember the full things, but it said he said to, to give you life and that more abundantly. I don't know why I closed this, but I did. Maybe because I just, God said, because you didn't write it down. Oh. I thought it was in there. Oh, Father. God knows I don't like to do things like this. But I also know that 
didn't make me to do what I like. He made me to be what was necessary for the moment, and I never thought I'd stand in the times I'm standing or the places I've had to come. But I can stand here. It's like this woman said, not just about Oral Roberts, but about all the things that's happening. I only want to see Jesus. I can look at the darkness. I can understand it. I can hear God in the midst of it. But what I want to see come out of it is Jesus. I don't want to have a conversation about darkness, though I know I have to speak about it and I have to deal with it, not only in other people, but in myself. <sighs> but I believe that what we're walking in today regardless of what it may look like, I believe that we're openings into that abundant life to flow through this world with great power and great surges. Surges of upheaval, but also surges of movement forward in people's lives. I've always kind of liked to stood in the middle, like a, I understand this from this boy board, and you know, everybody God says, but it's like God's, God's taking a, a, a thing out of me. That his presence is more important for you to see than for you to be reasoned with. God's worthy for us to move. In the setting of this song, they were leaving Egypt. In this setting, they were in the wilderness and they were having to go on. But I'm not going on feeling sorry for anything. I'm not gonna weep that way. I do a lot of weeping. Maybe that's because I was so <laughs> arrogant in the past, but it's okay. It creates a place and a path where God can speak and I don't, he doesn't have to hear my argument. He just hears me say, Lord, show me, teach me. Where am I not seeing this? Not why didn't I? But where are we going now? What makes this pleasing in your sight that we're still here? What makes it pleasant in your sight when it seems like sometimes it must be futile? But I don't believe God has established this in Pastor's heart for nothing. God's always been more powerful than any of us. I honor what I honor, but I was very young when they died. I have to honor the things that didn't seem like came to pass. I'm not talking about here, but I'm talking about from my birth on. And to realize that God has never left your side. He is never tired of you. He's never disappointed in you because he does not look out of the, dark, out of the darkness's record. He reads from his book. And he reads from the blood of his son, which was the light in which it was written. Because then we were caught in darkness and the war was raging to keep us from even coming to pass. But God wrote 
our lives in continuance. What is continuance but the light? It was what was in his heart, what they together saw and created each one of you to be. It doesn't matter to me how other people might think you're twisted or, or worthless or, or whatever. It's like, that's not what you believe, that's not what I believe. There's nothing too hard for you. When the enemy realizes that he is not going to wear you down is when you begin to fight back in the spirit and refuse to let up. Not with begging God for something, but thanking God that whatever he sees that you need to know and how you need to be in those places, I don't want to miss you again, Lord. It may look like they're going to hell, but if you're, you put this before God, they're not going to hell. They'll have to move into those places of unpardonable sins, and those are things you can stand that the devil has no right to. Out of the heart, God spoke this to me years ago, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. And I know we were being taught that out of abundance of faith, you would speak faith and these things. That's not anything wrong with that. But there are other things in our heart that contradict the faith of God, that contradict and that cause the enemy to think that he still has a foothold in there. Paul wrote, we read it often, that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty before God for the pulling down of strongholds. Do you know that sometimes even when we allow God to pull down strongholds in us, we may have no record of it? But hallelujah, the praise of God that releases us, releases multitudes, releases nations, releases our family. If you're going to worry about that family, stop worrying about that family. Stop hovering over them as if you're going to be their answer. You are not going to be their answer. But the God who loves them and loves you, who knew them. I don't care who their father was or their mother was. I don't care what they'd been in. They weren't born if God had not planned that they were going to be in the earth. You're either going to stand that way or you're going to wander out here with the will to possibly, well, every aborted child is in heaven. Every child you've lost in death is in heaven. And you will see them. They'll know who you are. They know who you are now. Hallelujah. Praise God. If you want to help people, you're going to have to help them in the natural as God's you see to do. But you better help them in the spirit. You can't help this place just by coming here. You've got to help this place because you're going to hear from God and you're going to begin to seek the face of God over what he sees and even let him show you so that you have the opportunity like he has had to me in times past to repent so that that thing doesn't continue. Those words can be silenced in a heart where I have delivered them in anger or unbelief, or accusation, or hurt. 
where we blamed our situations on someone else, and it may have been, but there's still a place that you, we haven't connected with that God knows who you are that he created. He knows more about us. Hallelujah. And he loves me. There's still places that I might want to wonder in the flesh. But God says you're not going to falter or stumble over this much longer. <laughs> Praise God. And everything doesn't have to be to my satisfaction because sometimes in those places God's trying to show you there's some, you're not looking you're not looking glorious enough. <laughs> I don't mean for myself, but you're not looking into my glory. There's something beyond this that if you'll walk with me here, that'll be so pleasing in my sight. And I don't think that he just tells me those things alone. I believe that he has us together because as we, we come to him, then we'll know how to be with one another. A reputation is not, not good enough. Isn't good enough. A pattern of something isn't good enough. But a pattern of something will show that something's in you. Don't let it die. It's him that gives life to it, but he gives life to it that's continuous. It doesn't exist in a year or a happening or a setting. It moves in eternity. He put eternity in our hearts. We're going to have to move in eternity in these days that are ahead of us. We've got to go beyond what we know, but we've got to love the God who loves us, and we've got to know. Hallelujah. I don't often think that I have all the answers. I just know there are places where I can't go. Hallelujah. Until God says, come on. Come on. It'll be okay. So praise God. Praise God. I just remember something. I don't know whether it's in this book. I haven't looked at the whole book. I just kind of picked it up yesterday before yesterday. But there's something I remember out of the... <laughs> we think that the faith movement began in... <laughs> <laughs> in the 1960s, I like the way we, it may be a movement, it was not the beginning of faith. <laughs> but I'm thankful for what God's planted. I know I haven't really taken good, put it in good ground always and all those sort of things, but what's from Him uh, it's, it's either there, but it's not all complete. I don't know how to say this. Tell me, Lord, to say it. Sometimes you know things. I'm going to put it out there on you because I'm saying this because it's, it's like God talking to me. Sometimes you know things. They're not wrong, but they're not full. They don't touch all the areas that God means for that to touch. And we just keep them in, incarcerated in a place where they're not to grow. But when God's word is in you, it always produces it grows, it matures. You're supposed to mature. You're not supposed to stay with the same, you know, faith or whatever that you, you came. You're supposed to grow. You guys have grown, but I'm just saying that I'm, I want the enemy's hand taken off of you so that the fullness of what God meant in you is, is released to grow, that your roots are not encumbered with, with the darkness, but they begin to be fueled in the light. Sometimes we've settled to become things because it's more convenient. But God knew exactly what he meant, even if we didn't know what he meant. 
And sometimes the glory is greater in the latter house than it was in the beginning of the house. I believe that goes personally in individuals, but I believe also it has to do with, with the church. Not the church as we look at it, but the church. I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. God's vision of the church can't be what we've experienced year after year, even though there have been places of revival and great rejoicing. We've got to move on. Every generation has to move on. You can't pass on spiritual maturity, but you can pass on the spirit of the living God by the words of God and by the prayers. As impossible as it seems, Nina, God will do right concerning those grandchildren of yours. It may seem like the lame man sitting there at the, that pool of Siloam where, where it was just waters would come, the angels would come, and nobody, he couldn't get there. But your tears should never come from sorrow, confusion, or accusation against yourself. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Don't let your mind or your mouth or the things that trouble you continue to trouble you in those things. If there are things to be fought, you will know them but you must know God more than you know the things. And God will show you different ways to even fight the gates of hell. But you can't fight the enemy with his words still ringing louder than the faith and the blood of Jesus. It's one thing to sing about the songs, but they are, it's the truth. There's power in the blood. It's been a few, a while back now, but I remember one day sitting in the house. I got up out of my chair, it had been before the Lord got out of my chair. And I can't tell you how long, it's a good thing I, Olympia doesn't come home all the time. Right the, <laughs> she has other things and she's involved in now, but it was, it was dark. And all I could say was there is power in the blood of Jesus. If I said it a hundred million times and said it different ways with different inflections, I don't know. All I know is that all I could say out of my mouth, <laughs> walking through the house, you know, whatever, there's power in the blood of Jesus. There's power in the blood of Jesus. You know, and I'd weep because I didn't know why. And I was, you know, all the thoughts came, well, you just don't believe God's trying. You know, all these things came, but it was just like, there was some, there was another language, but it was not another language. It was my voice and me speaking English, but it was like something was going on. <laughs> it was like, you know, I wish I could say I felt like I was splashing in the waters of the river. I didn't feel anything <laughs> as far as that's concerned. But I knew but by the time that something else came out of my mouth other than that. And could you have said something else? Probably so. I didn't answer the phone. I didn't do anything. <laughs> And I, I said to God, not that day, because it's not like you, well, God, what was all that about? Well, what kind of attitude is that to have with God? 
I mean, sometimes we can be cute and curt about things, but there's just some things you have to realize if it's holy to God, you better keep it holy, even if it seems, you know. And to this day, I don't have an answer for it, except that if you want to fight me about there's power in the blood of Jesus, something's already built with weapons of warfare. <laughs> Because I could feel something change. I could feel something turning, but it wasn't, may not even have been in me per se, but whatever it was, it was turning. All I knew was I had to prevail. And I'm not saying that to make some big wonderful thing of me. I can tell you a lot of times I didn't prevail about anything. So that's not the point. Uh, what I'm saying is, there's a place where you have to, you just have to believe what God said. Mm -hmm. It's going to be more, it's going to be stronger than any doctor's report, any psychiatrist's report, any way in somebody else. It's, it's going to be bigger than that. Hallelujah. And give no foothold for the devil. Give no foothold to the devil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, this is, praise the Lord. I just keep my mouth shut. <laughs> uh, praise God. Well, hallelujah. How are we doing? We're doing good. Anything you would like to just, uh, not about me, but would you like to testify about God? Would you like to just bless his name just for a little bit? Do you have something to speak? If not, it's okay. Yes, Frank. I just want to uh, honor God and give him thanks for the advance he was giving to you. <laughs> and of course, the work to Literally, yes. <laughs> yes. But you know, uh, we came a long way in a short walk and just for a love. We did. See, we're getting we're getting it all back together. <laughs> <now. laughs> it should yeah. be there. Yeah, we got it. I was just uh, giving God honor for the advancement we have made in uh, against the virus and mm -hmm. bringing us closer together. And um, like I said, God is in charge of the of the entire situation, mm -hmm. and um, he, he he sees the end. I mean, we don't see the end, but God sees it, mm -hmm. and uh, we can bless Him for that. Yes, Amen. That's right. That's right. Thanks. That's right. Anyone else? Oh, Cindy. Thank you. I just want to thank God for thankfulness that he's put in my heart, a gratefulness, a willing to press through. To realize he's with me and to guide me and lead me whatever it is I have to do to give me strength. He's given me much physical strength and much healing. Mm -hmm. I go back to the neurosurgeon next week, not neuro, but orthopedic surgeon next week for his final report. And frankly, it doesn't make a difference what he says because I have God's report mm -hmm. of absolute total healing and full response. Glory to your name. <laughs> he said I couldn't do that. He said I couldn't do that. Well, that's man, and they know nothing. Amen. But I know my creator, and I know he lives in me and with me, and I, he's given me a life to live for him. Amen. 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 Who else? 
Pastor John, well, you've got your own mic. You have your own mic. Okay. Now it is. I'm on. I just want to thank God for uh, yesterday. Um, the, the opportunity to get together, just to be with one another. And it wasn't like uh, a memory of things in the past. It was like the life of God flowing with one another. And um, my set, before I had come, I had been reading in Acts and uh, how the people were with one mind and one soul, it says, and how um, they prayed for the miraculous things to happen in the name of Jesus and how um, that they had the one mind and one, one soul was the agreement on that no one would have a need, that no one would be needy among them in the mind that nothing belonged to themselves, that they did not have possessions so that they would fulfill uh, the needs of those around them. It's like, God, how wonderful. And then to see God respond to their mind and their soul and the unity by performing miracles. And he says that great grace was with them. Great grace was with them. And they testified to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's like, what is that? It's like in the midst of our meeting, we were testifying to the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. And it's like, as I left, some of the sweetness of the spirit, um, I could, it was like, God, thank you. It's like your spirit is so sweet. And to know that something was done. And it's like, thank you, God, that um, something is over. And it's time, like you said, it's time to move. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. For the goodness and grace of grace of God. Um, I am grateful that I am back. I'm grateful that I was there. My eyes were opened, and I am grateful, Pastor Sharon, for the words that you spoke and I hear. And um, uh, blessed be the name of our God, for he is victorious. We will be victorious. We will win, <laughs> along with our Lord Jesus Christ. And um, the words that you have spoken today, if anybody was offended or anything else, I want you to know that they were all for me. Anyway, so... <laughs> I want you to know that you sat through it for me. Thank you, Pastor Sharon. <laughs> Anyone else? Oh, Donna. Good girl. Um... I know I was late, sorry. That's all right. Um, it's like I told Terry, sometimes it takes a village to get me out of that house. <laughs> yeah. Oh, amen. Can I get a witness? Yeah, yeah. Because uh, it's like, you know, I have grandbabies now. You know, they've been with me for three weeks nonstop because their father was in Columbia. And the grandfather was up in northern Maine. So me and Hannah have been like, Oh, <laughs> all day, all the time. Yeah. So this morning, you know, it was one of those, just those days. Anyway, regardless, um, you know, I, I hear what you're saying. You know what I mean? It's like, um, it's like living in this place. Um, I've had to live with drugs, alcohol for a year. Whether I'm with her or whether I'm with my son, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. I couldn't go in there and say, I don't want no drugs, no alcohol, you can't live your life because of me. 
I had to step back and say, I can, you know, do whatever you want. I don't care, I, that, but I'm not doing it. You know, I just keep living my life, you know, whatever. So then, you know, you get to a point to where it's like, you know, you, you don't, it seems like you're out there. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And um, this morning I was looking at Caleb, looking at Gabriel, thinking about Nikki, the things he's went through and whatever, you know, just everything in general, the, the body, everybody here and all that, considering things. And I was just crying out to God. And I said, you know, I told Hannah, I said, you know, it doesn't matter regardless of anything. I said, the thing is, is that God is God, yeah. you know? I said, right. whether we're here, whether we're not, it don't matter, but I know what I have to do. I know where I need to stand mm -hmm. in the spirit. Mm -hmm. I said, and right now, where I need to be is there. Mm -hmm. And I said, I said, there's nothing else for me right now. And I said, if I die believing that mm -hmm. before God, then that's it. I, you know, you get to a place like that, like you said. Mm -hmm. So I laid it down and I just, you know, I said, I'm out of here. I, I need to continue. I need to continue on this journey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the beauty of it, it's like pastors always said, God, we need you halfway. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's like coming down Main Street, going over that bridge, you know, the little tracks there. And the father said, I hear you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, you know, you feel him coming on you, and he said, I know about your son, I know about your, you know, he said it real fast, but you know, he says, I see it, I know what 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 I see it, I know, and I'm going to bless it, I'm going to say it, I know it, I know what I'm going to do, and I know, and I know, and you're feeling all of it going through, and I'm bawling, I'm yeah. like, God, and then I remember what pastor said, I meet you halfway, and I said, God, you're meeting me, and I re understood, it's because, you know, you make the step, you know, yeah. exactly. I acknowledged to the darkness, I don't care what you say, mm -hmm. I know who I am and I know who my God is. Amen, yeah. amen, yeah. amen. And I, and uh -huh. I, and I yeah. said, iniquities, you're right, you're right. Because mm -hmm. all week long we've been trying to figure out why is Gabe like this? Oh, because of his grandfather, oh, because of his father. No, mm -hmm. you're right, Pastor Sharon. Mm -hmm. Don't speak the past mm -hmm. to the children. Mm -hmm. You're right. Those iniquities have been cut off. Amen. God promised it. Amen. And if even though all of them failed mm -hmm. and all of them left, I'm mm -hmm. still here. That's right. That's right. So it's like it don't matter. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. But That's you're right. right. And That's I'm going right. to tell in this house no longer we're going to do this. Mm -hmm. He is who he is, that boy. And we're going to treat him the way that God tells us to treat him. Mm -hmm. It don't matter Amen. about where his father came from or his grandfather or nothing or nothing yeah. or nothing. Yeah. And I'm going to treat Hannah and Nikki the same way too. Yes. I have to end it, the yes. cycle. Yes. yes. I have to end the cycle of yes. the mental abuse that reigns and the physical abuse and the trauma. I have mm -hmm. to end that cycle. Yes. I have to end it. And yes. it's going to end yes. by the speech. Mm -hmm. It's going to end in God. Obviously, you know there's more. But I have to start somewhere. Yes. yes. I think this is a step, Pastor Sharon. Yes. Thank you, Lord. I think yes. so. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Let's just. Yes. Father, we praise you. We praise you, O oh God. We thank you that your voice prevails. It will continue to prevail. That the blood of Jesus, Father, we just. We speak the blood. We speak the blood over every place that wants to, to still say a lie. Hallelujah. Thank you in Donna's heart and all of our hearts, Lord. Yes, oh God. Hallelujah. If it means we have to stop. And somebody said, what was he going to say? And we have to say, whatever it was, it's nothing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Anyone else? Just keep standing, Noah. Come up here. Um, get the mic from Dick. I mean, yeah, get the mic from Dick. And will you receive our offering and close us, please? Please, come right up here. Somebody on the, the camera would love to see somebody else other than me standing up there. <laughs> Rejoice their hearts, would you? I will sign that release now. 
Father, we thank you for the day that you've given us. We thank you for the words that you've delivered. We thank you for the hearts that's been put in this place to receive, and we thank you for the spirit that gives us the strength to receive. Yes. We thank you for the offerings that have been given.